Hello my loves, thank you so much for being on my channel. I'm Ellie Frost and on this channel we're talking about rapidly and radically healing and transforming during and after narcissistic abuse and just general transformation, right? So I want to talk about manifesting your best life after narcissistic abuse because this is really important. So many people leave the narcissist and then they don't know what they want in their life, right? There's lots of reasons why we get attached to narcissist enmeshed, but our whole life becomes about them, or so much of it, if you look at the percentages of how much time and energy and focus you put on them, right? Which means we're not generating, because we're like little generators on this planet, you know, we're manifestors. You're, to be honest, you're manifesting every day, all day. You just don't necessarily intentionally manifest, right? So we're like, I keep getting the same situations and da, 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 because you're an energetic match, but you're still manifesting it every day. You just don't consciously manifest every day, right? So you're already a great manifester. But some of us are great manifestors of things we don't want, right? And when you leave the narcissist or start a new life, it's very daunting sometimes because there's a big void or it feels like a big void, yeah? Sometimes you're going to have an emotional crash, which I've got a video on because all the trauma is going to hit you and you need to know how to process that so you can come into Sovereign and do that. Sometimes you're going to feel lonely, right? But lonely doesn't always mean you miss a narcissist. Lonely can mean I feel disconnected, right? We just feel disconnected from the world, from life, from our life. And we're not sure. We haven't got the clarity and sureness of what to do next. And we've had our self-esteem kind of violated, attacked. So we don't often believe that we can do much. Everything can, see, unless we get our energy right, everything can either feel like an exciting opportunity or it's such a big, scary step, yeah? There is no doubt when we go into new things in our life, there are gonna be times when we feel overwhelmed and like confused and unsure. And if we understand how to navigate that, that doesn't have to put us off at all. It just feels like part of a process and we know where we're going. But if we don't know where we're going, then it can all just feel scary. It can all feel like a burden, you know? It, it, think of the energy of like, I get to create what I want. I know I want to experience like, I want to experience work that's meaningful to me, that I really enjoy, that I feel validated and paid well in and, you know, that I can do really well in and progress. I want to be in relationships where I feel seen and heard and connected and loved and supported, right? I want to do activities and find out things that actually inspire me, that keep me alive, that energize me, yeah? I want to feel good about my life. I want to feel really expanded and inspired, right? So when we get clear, you don't have to know what you're going to do, but you are going to know, you can tap into what experience of life do I want to have? I like, I do like my own time. I am pretty introverted and I am a thinker and things, but I also like spontaneity and adventures and you know, like, I love traveling. Actually, you know, one thing I must say is I did like about the RV world. I didn't do a lot of it, but I did like the possibility of being able just to travel and camp and that I enjoy. Not necessarily camping on the ground for me personally, but like that thing about just going somewhere new and finding a new city and that is so inspiring to me still. I still want to RV around the States. I think that is fantastic. Hang on, my puppy wants to go out. So, hi, baby. Yeah, sorry, mouse. Um, I should have left the door open. So, yes, we know what we want to feel like, right? That's your starting point, not what do I need to do, because that will just make you feel like you're, you've got this task list. What do I want to experience? How do I want to feel? That you'll know. You'll know it, right? Your soul knows. So then it's like, okay, we get clear on that. And then we look at our alignment in our life, right? Because when you're manifesting a life you actually want, you've got to be an energetic match, which means your thoughts, beliefs, and actions have to add up, which also means we're very clear when things are not aligned. So I put people in their senses a lot because then you, you, you know how you feel. 
unless you numb out, leave your body, which a lot of people do more than we think we do, we detach um, because we don't want to feel what we're feeling, or we get into our heads when we have a feeling, which is a messenger, telling us that something isn't right for us, and we try and logic our way out of it. I promise you there will be so many things in your life where you'd have said often, not, I mean, I don't know personally for you, but there often are, where we have said, <laughs> we have talked ourselves out of how we felt, and in hindsight gone, I wish I knew it, I had an intuition, I wish I'd listened. But because we overvalue our, lo our logic and undervalue our senses, right, we waste a lot of time, frankly, because like, we had that inkling often, it wasn't quite right for us. But what would have got us doing things that we shouldn't do? We logic our way out of our feelings, so thinkings and feelings should be handled very differently. And two, fear. 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 False evidence appearing real. Fear is an illusion and a lie, but it's very real in the body. Most of us are following our fears. If you follow your fears, you're literally, it's, it's like you've set your GPS to everything you don't want. You know, if you were driving a car, and then you know they say a lot of people, if there's a car wreck, a lot of people will also wreck their car because they look at the car wreck. They're looking in the direction. So when we're looking in the direction of my money's going to run out, my, my health's going to go, I'm about to have something terrible happen to me, you're driving your life that way thinking you avoided it. I must look at that car wreck to make sure I don't hit it. But you know when you drive, you've got to look way ahead in the road and that will take you in that direction. So we have to not act from fear. Fear is not in the driving seat, right? Our true aligned life is. This is how we manifest much better. So when we understand that I'm feeling fear, now, if you're not in chronic PTSD, there's nothing wrong with fear. It's going to be part of your life, especially if you do anything new. But, like, I'm feeling fear. That means I'm believing some kind of lie that is definitely more negatively focused than positively one. So what fear is this? Fear is so irrational, the things it will tell you. But, like, it's not... It's not you're supposed to live a life with no fear. In fact, that would be ridiculous. Like, human beings feel fear. The only people that don't seem to feel fear, anxiety, remorse are narcissists. Yeah? Not quite human. So, there's a reason you feel fear, but it's not always to not go ahead. In fact, very <laughs> often it's nothing to do with not going ahead. You see, the brain is a computer program, literally. And it, like, anything different that it doesn't know, it produces fear to go... Uh, just want you to know, imagine it was your secretary, this is your brain, just want you to know we haven't done this before and what I know from this, this and this is this, this and this could go wrong. That's the brain's job, yeah? So it can only, it's like a catalogue of the past, it can't project the future, which is why we've got to get into our hearts and our vision a bit more and manifest our future emotionally actually from our feelings. But like, the brain just knows what it knows. And its job, like your little helpful secretary, because sometimes it will come up with some really good things that you might have forgotten about, is to remind you of what might go wrong. Not to, your brain, your mind, the catalogue of the past isn't your direction to the future, it's not your GPS, it's just reminding you of potential obstacles. Where that's useful is that I remember if I put my hand on the cooker, it's really hot when it's on. So I don't want to burn my hand, so I won't do that, right? If you're with a narcissist, it's like you put your hand on the cooker and slammed it down, you're going to get burnt. But like, it's still hot with a narcissist, it's burning, it's burning up. So the fear is just your mind's job to say, <laughs> by the way, we have, have to inform you that we have analysed this and this is all the things that can go wrong, yeah? Now some of those things you might want to think about and say, huh, yeah, I am willing, I understand that there's a potential risk in this and I've, I've acknowledged it and I'm going to go ahead, yeah? Or I've acknowledged there's a potential risk in this and I'll just change what I'm doing a little bit to make myself more prepared. That's all it's for. Not to go, here's some fear, don't live your life. Here's some fear, stop your dreams. Here's your fear, stop the car, turn off the GPS, turn around and repeat your past, which is what most of us do, because we don't understand that fear is a very normal thing. 
Very normal thing. Now, if it's chronic fear, the body's going first. 80% of our thinking is often body first, especially after trauma, when it's like firing off things that we get to regulate. And I teach you how to do that in sovereign and private clients and stuff. But like, so your, your body might go into fear because of um, a memory of something, like the body remembers, body keeps score of things. But like, Again, it's not that there's any danger ahead of you. So your heart is what is guiding you. Your heart is what is telling you what, what is right for you. And there's, a, there's an intuition in you that knows exactly what you want, even when you don't. So, so many of us are looking at the external world and trying to think, well, I don't know what I want. You don't need to. What you've got to do is open your energy field, get into your heart more, do more things that inspire you, that break you out of old chains, that give you new synaptic connections in the brain, right? So your brain, especially when you're reconditioning the body, when you're out of PTSD, it's about the things that you were, couldn't overcome before, creating new synaptic connections, which is the brain connections, that now you actually can do those things, right? When you're not in PTSD, and now you can create new wiring and new belief systems that support you. So new chemicals, new beliefs. So if you start with getting into things, like what are the feelings I want? I want more, I want to do more inspiring things. Right, what's an inspiring thing for me to do today? Yeah? I'll go to the bookstore and I'll find a book that inspires me. I'll watch a movie that inspires me. I'll stop studying narcissist today and, <laughs> and I will start reading about something I wanted to do to my house, yeah? You've got to go first in the universe, right? So the universe does not drop things in your lap necessarily unless you're aligned with them. It can happen that way that things just turn up for you, but we have to be a cooperative component, which means the universe follows our lead in, in energetics and in what we want to create, which means that you know, when you make a step towards something, the universe starts producing for you opportunities. So if I want a new car, I don't know how to buy it yet, maybe, but I get the prospectus or I go and take it for a test run, then I'm becoming a better energetic match. I'm telling the universe I'm available for it. So one of the keys to manifestation is you get what you're available for energetically. Most of us don't realize that we're not available because we're letting our fear run the show. So when the universe, like, is tickling us it's got like little things in the quantum field that could come towards us our fear will go ah reject reject we've turned it down in our energy field right so being a great receiver is a great thing to do in manifestation but we don't know how to always do that in our energy because it involves us being available for a way for things to happen that we can't control of course you can't if you want to go above your pay grade, right, <laughs> in life, in any area, right? I'm just saying that because it's kind of a known term. But if I want to go above my pay grade, then I don't know how to be that person yet. So what I've got to do is be available for it so I can get what I need to become in order to align with it. So if there's an idea I need to do, a course I need to take, it's something I need to learn, the universe will start bringing me those things because now I'm heading in the direction of going up a pay grade. Right? When I'm stuck and looking from the vantage point of where I am to how do I get from here to there, but I'm looking only here, you can't get to there from there. You have to expand your energy, your focus, your thoughts, your thinking into the next level up. And then from there, be available to calibrate. And that means for all the information to come to you. And that's what happens when we rise and elevate our consciousness into new areas of life, into new experiences of life that are elevated, that, are, that contain a much higher frequency for us of enjoyment, right? I hope that makes sense. I'm thinking of opening a manifestation course in June. I think that's the next one I'm going to do. That's what I'm thinking of for you guys. But again, if you're very traumatized, you need to do sovereign and learn how to move all the stuff out of the body. But actually, like, I think that would be quite exciting um, to do something in advanced manifestations because manifestation isn't a hit and miss thing. It's not a... Uh, People will talk all the time, like how they get the exact things in life, because of course they did. They were heading in that direction, like when you put something in a GPS. It's actually so much more simple than we think, but most of us are saying we're trying to manifest things, but you, we don't realise that your energy's got to align. So if I'm saying, I want a new job, I want a new job, but you've actually got a lot of resistance in your body to it because your energy is 
I don't have that job, I don't have that job, the dominant energy wins. So if you're vibrating at, I'm getting a new job, I know I am, it's going to be great. If that's your dominant energy, you'll get one really quick. If your dominant energy is resistance to it, I'm in lack, I'm in lack, I'm in lack, the universe hears they want the experience of lack. The universe does not judge good and bad emotions. It just aligns with your dominant energy, right? It's energetics we have to understand in manifestation. So yes, I'm thinking of uh, doing a manifestation course in June. If you'd like to do that, let me know. Other than that, lots of love, guys. I'll speak to you soon.